How's it folks? Before I get started, I just want to point out that the hotfix patch that came out earlier today didn't come with any patch notes, but Pyrrhic over on Discord did specify that it was meant to fix a couple of crashes, but most importantly for those who were getting the crash right at the end of the game during the final cutscene, this patch hotfix should fix that for you now. And moving on to the actual video that I wanted to talk about, when I mentioned secret changes that Dying Light 2 introduced with the Reloaded Edition, I'm specifically talking about stuff that was not included in any of the patch notes. So this is stuff they slipped under the hood, so to speak. So first on the list, let's start off with the flashlight. From now on, you'll be able to get it right from the beginning of the game, whereas in previous iterations, you would have to make your way through the prologue until you encounter Dylan and he will give you the flashlight. Nowadays you get it right from the beginning, which should make the first fight with the witch banshee outside of that deserted house a little bit easier now that you can actually see what's going on around you. And they also made a second change with the flashlight. In previous versions, it was a tighter, more focused beam of light Whereas this one, we've got a wider, less focused version of the flashlight. So we can actually get a clearer view of anything close by us. Next up would be them introducing poppies to all those flower gardens scattered on the different rooftops. Whereas before, you'll maybe get one or two at specific rooftop gardens. But now pretty much every rooftop garden has three or so poppies surrounding it. So you should have plenty of those poppies to get to craft those boosters to make the game a little bit easier. Also nice that they're actually reducing the grind a bit. It's still possible for you to buy a good chunk of the flowers and whatnot from the Bubba in the old church, but it's nice that they've actually added more of them throughout the world. And then next on the list would be talking about the board missions. They do mention the board missions in the actual patch notes, but they don't talk about the thank you notes that you get from completing those different missions where the people thank Aiden for actually helping them, which I thought was a nice touch. And you can find them at the Fisher bedroom, just above where Aiden sleeps, and in the PK ship, just above his desk in that bedroom crate thing there. Along with those thank you notes, one of those missions also included a dumpling charm. It doesn't have any gameplay effects, it's just a purely cosmetic charm. They added it during that coffee run mission where you get in the recipe in one of the counters below the cash register. And then they also added a couple new blueprints associated with the bounty board missions, which include the rendering knife, which inflicts bleeding damage. So if you're trying to get certain bounties completed requiring you to do bleeding damage, this one for that out quite quickly. And then also the Angel of Villador Polarm, which was part of the PK side of the board missions, which as I'm a big fan of the new Polarms, I'm pretty chuffed with. Definitely like running around with new Polarms. And then one of the new items available over on the Pilgrim's Outpost is a charm that will repair your weapons, which basically takes the place of the old Korek charm that was replaced by the craft masters being able to repair weapons. So this way you can repair weapons that you weren't able to repair via the craft master. And I'm specifically talking about those glitch weapons you could get from the Bloody Tars DLC, which is now free and available for everyone who owns Dying Light 2. It is a charm associated with the first Pilgrim's bundle. And then next on the list is something that I'll be honest, I'm not 100% certain of, but I do believe they've made the difference more pronounced. I'm talking about different zombie hearts or infected hearts, where there did used to be some infected that were taller than others, but I feel like they've made the differences more pronounced nowadays. You can now get zombies that are significantly shorter than their counterparts. They do keep adding new zombie variants of the normal zombies and the virals, but they've also added a lot more of the female variants of the different zombies. And those ones are definitely on the shorter side compared to some of the, the bigger boys. So I may just not have noticed that it's been around for a while, but I feel like the difference is more pronounced after the most recent patch. 
And then there's two other things which I've already covered in previous videos. Those are the brand new Waltz cutscene where he chases you right after you get interrupted by Lawan. And then the six new collectibles that were introduced with the patch, with four of them associated with the Lost Armory quest from Jay and the other two from Tolga and Fatine, which I'll have videos linking those two different things at the end of this video. And then a couple of other changes that I did bring up in previous videos include the Renegades now having elemental weapons, which include shock, toxic and fire damage weapons. Be very careful of the toxic one because that can quite easily take out your entire health pool and every time he will hit you it renews the debuff as well as slowing you down. So either take him out from range or dodge them properly if you don't want to suddenly find yourself at the other end of a modified weapon. And the last change that I mentioned in a previous video has to do with the new combat finisher that came with the harpoon weapon. It's quite a little thanky one where he knocks their feet out from underneath them and then smashes their head in. I truly hope that Techland continues to add more combat finishes in future updates as it is satisfying to be able to pull them off properly. And then the final change is kind of me just sort of wishing this out of thin air, but it is now possible to dual wield guns. Sort of. Maybe. If you kind of squint your eyes and have a very active imagination. Basically, I'm talking about the little boomstick, which players can use by their tool slot, and Aiden shoots that from his left hand, and if you have a pistol in your right hand, you can pretend you do your wield in with a slap-together sort of gun and an actual gun from before the apocalypse happened. Sort of. <laughs> Anyway, do you feel like there are any other changes that weren't mentioned in the patch notes that you thought I should have brought up? Please drop a comment and let me know. Other than that, I'm planning to start making videos about Dragon's Dogma 2 from tomorrow onwards. This doesn't mean that I've stopped making videos about Dying Light 2. I am going to continue making those videos. Just wanted to give you all a heads up. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Take care and cheers for now.